Hi everyone, I want to talk about acute area 4 and I'll be talking about sugar toxin producing E. coli. It's not going to be a long story, but it is very significant that I bring this out as a separate presentation. Step STEC sugar toxin producing E. coli. Okay, let's go. Okay, this is a separate presentation. Um, a type of toxin produced by a group of Escherichia coli, sugar toxin. We have to be careful with antibodies here. It is wise to have two tests for sugar toxin producing Escherichia coli because if we give antibodies, we may likely have hemolytic uremic syndrome, particularly in children. Hemolytic uremic syndrome from treating sugar toxin producing E. coli is more of children problem than adult. Um, adults will have thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. So if patient is a fibroid, but having bloody diarrhea and there's an outbreak, well, we still have to wait because this is likely a stacked situation. In that case, we will have the lab done before administering the antibiotics that we might be planning to give. Okay? Don't give antibiotics yet. If you're suspecting sugar toxin producing E. coli, Hold it, get the lab done, let that be established or ruled out. Then you can do whatever is appropriate. The agents there are sugar toxin by SHI coli 0104H4. And sometimes may be caused by enterohemorrhagic E. coli. For example, E. coli 0157H7. In the case of enterohemorrhagic E. coli, these two will also be stained with blood, to be bloody because they can attach firmly to the gut of the affected individual. The transmission is Fikuora, like the case of causes of other diarrhea with contaminated water stained with feces and could be found in uncooked or poorly cooked beef, raw bean sprouts, and any unhygienic practices with contaminated water or food. It spreads very easily and very widely. What are the symptoms? The symptoms here will be exactly like that of the cases presented under acute diarrhea one, two, and three. That is you know, loose, frequent stools, stained with blood or mucus, maybe pain. And in addition to that, when there's hypovolemia, leading to hypovolemic shock, the individual could become weak and dizzy, and decreased blood pressure, high pulse, loss of consciousness or confusion, and so on and so forth, with dehydration, you know, dry mouth, dry leaves, sunken eyes, you know, sunken fontanel, everywhere. But when there is hemolytic uremic syndrome, uh, that will lead to immaturia as well, possible renal failure, and of course, anemia. And in elderly, it can cause thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura with clotting and bleeding problems. The individual could come down with stroke or scissors. The treatment, since we will not rush into uh, giving antibiotics, then it's going to be supportive with general IV fluid, depending on the state of the affected person. If there is hemolytic uremic syndrome already, or there is seizure already, or there is stroke already, we treat appropriately. Or 
all, there is thrombotic tubes and to pinic opora, we treat appropriately. No antibiotics until we are sure of suspicion of sepsis. When there is sepsis, then we treat with antibiotics, please. Immunity Grammy syndrome could be treated with a promising medication like Aculizuma, but that is still on the way. And with that, I come to the end of this very short presentation, but very significant in the management of acute diarrhea because we need to know the exact cause and prevent some other possible complications that may be very, very fatal. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get these presentations immediately they are published. For you to enjoy this presentation, please I will advise that you go over video on acute diarrhea one, diarrhea two, and diarrhea three. Thank you.